Hey everyone, Mike Molnar here. I'm an internal medicine doctor from Los Angeles, California. And like many of you guys, when I first heard the news of what happened in Itaewon, South Korea, I couldn't believe it. There was a, a crush, a crowd crush incident, and over 150 people lost their lives. Many of these were young people who were out there just wanting to celebrate Halloween, and it ended in this tragedy. So what exactly happened? Well, a lot of the media outlets were first reporting this as a stampede. The victims were crushed by a large crowd that stampeded in Seoul. But that is a mischaracterization. This wasn't like a unruly mob that was just running around trampling people down. Uh, quite the contrary. This was simply too many people in too small of a space. And what happened is the crowd just got more and more out of control. Eventually, this led to compressive asphyxia. So what this is, is when there are so many people crammed up, pushed up against each other, you get to the point where you can't even expand the chest wall enough to allow for normal ventilation. Your diaphragm is trying to move down, trying to create that negative intrathoracic pressure to allow air to move in, uh, but it just can't happen because there's just too much force causing extrinsic compression of the thorax. So then what happens is you don't get air movement and then you don't get gas exchange. So carbon dioxide, builds up within the body. Now, first, uh, this buildup of CO2 gives a sensation of air hunger. You feel like you have to take a breath. That's what happens when you hold your breath. Let's say you're going underwater holding your breath. Eventually, you feel like you have to come up for air. And the reason you feel that way isn't because of a lack of oxygen, but rather buildup of carbon dioxide. So that's the first thing that would happen. But then after that, when CO2 levels rise enough, you end up with the respiratory acidosis. This is where acid levels in the blood rise. And this can make people very confused and eventually even uh, make them go into a coma. Now, along with this, you also get hypoxemia. That's where the oxygen levels dip down low. And then when this gets severe enough, it can lead to pulseless electrical activity, which is a type of cardiac arrest. Now, this type of cardiac arrest isn't the really dramatic one that you see in the movies all the time where the doctor rushes in with the electric pads to shock the patient. Uh, that's not what this is. What happens here is the heart may still have some detectable electrical activity, but it's not an arrhythmia. It's not ventricular fibrillation, not anything you can shock. What you do instead is CPR and you can give medications like epinephrine. So that's the nuts and bolts physiology of this, kind of like the medical mechanics. But on a bigger scale, how did this even happen in the first place? Well, when you have a big crowd, if it becomes dense enough, the situation can become dangerous. And typically this occurs right around five people per square meter. Now, analysis of photographs at Itaewon show more like seven to 10 people per square meter. So this is definitely a situation where you even lose the ability to control your own movements. The whole crowd just starts to be, behave almost like a fluid. And so you see these waves of people. And right here, this is when things can really get out of control. And to make matters worse, if people in the back of the crowd fall, this can create a domino effect whole crowd falls down and then you end up with what's called a crowd crush where people get smothered. There can even be as much as 800 plus pounds of pressure on top of them, making it impossible to breathe. So all of this is truly horrific. So much so I'm not even going to post videos from it. I mean, I'm sure you can Google it if you want to see um, a footage of, of what happened. But what I hope we can take away from this are some tips for how to keep yourself safe in a crowd. So I think number one, uh, know your surroundings. Anytime you're in a crowded environment, let's say you're at a ball game or a concert, take a look around and uh, look look for other exits. Know that in an emergency, if there's a fire or something, your first instinct is gonna be to try to leave the way you came in, but that's what everyone else is gonna do. And if everybody flocks to the same exit, you can get a bottleneck and then that's where these sort of crowd crush incidents can happen. And next, remember that number of five people per square meter. Now, obviously we're not gonna be out there with a measuring tape counting the number of people, but once you start to feel that there are people crowding all around you so much so that you can't even really control your own movements, you're just kind of going with a wave with the crowd, that's a sign that things could be headed in a dangerous direction. And if possible, you want to try to relocate. But how do you do this? There's people all around you. You feel like you can't move. Well, what you want to do is move diagonally. If you try to move forward or side to side, it's hopeless. There's people blocking your movement. But oftentimes, you can still calmly squeeze in between people, move in a diagonal direction. You're a bishop, not a rook. 
And finally, let's say the crowd is so dense you can't even move at all. What do you do? Well, here you want to keep your arms up. Don't let them get pinned by your sides. Keep them up, keep them in front of you. This can help keep that inch of space that you need to allow your chest wall to expand in order to maintain normal ventilation. And there you go. There's a few tips for how to keep yourself safe during a potential crowd crush situation. Uh, again, this was a, a horrible thing that happened over holiday weekend. Nobody should ever Ever have to experience this but I hope you found this video to be helpful and until next time I'll see you guys later